Hello everyone. In this series, we are covering the most commonly asked Java technical interview questions. And the topic that we are covering today is the merging of two arrays. In this coding task, you are required to write a program that can, that can combine two separate arrays into a single array. Okay. And the solution that you provide, it should, it should be capable enough to handling of arrays of different size and maintain the order of the elements from each array. For example, if those are the two arrays that are given, the third array that you have, that you create, it should contain the elements of first and second arrays. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do here in, uh, in this task is to create my third array. And when I create my third array, I have to make sure that the third array, it has the enough capacity to contain the elements of the first and second arrays. So which means you need to initialize the size of the third array and the size of the third array, it should be the size of the first array plus the size of the second array. This is how I can initialize the size of the third array. Here I will give the sum of the array one's length plus array two's length. Array one's length plus array two length means that this third array, it will have the enough capacity to contain all the elements of first array as well as the second array. Okay. Next step, I will get the elements of the first and second arrays and then store them, assign them into the, to the indexes of this third array in the same exact index order. Okay. So I could use the for each loop to get the elements of the arrays easily. But I am still going to need a variable which can be the index number of this third array. Okay. So, so therefore I can declare this variable i and let it start from zero, which can be the index number of the third array. Okay. I assign a zero because uh, the third array, the first index number is zero. And next step, I will get each element of the first array and then assign it to the indexes of the third array. To get the each elements of the first array, I could use the for each loop to get the elements easily. Since each element in this array is an integer, my variable data type needs to be int. Okay. And after I get each element, I need to assign it to the indexes of the third array. So this each element of this first array needs to be assigned to the indexes of the third array, beginning indexes of the third array. And as for the index number, I can use i. And I also have to make sure that the first element of the first array is assigned to the first index of the third array. And during the next iteration of the loop, the next element needs to be assigned to the next index. So to make sure that the index number will also be increased by one, here I can use this operator, this unary operator, the increment operator, post increment operator. So that every time when the loop gets executed, it will be the index number will be increased by one. During the first execution, it will pass the current value, which is zero. And then the next execute during the next execution of the for loop, the i's value will be increased by one afterwards. Okay. And now if I display this third array by using this two string method of the array CTLD class, as you can see in the third array, I do have all the elements of the first array. It contains all the elements of first array. And the third array, it has the length of seven. As for the last four elements, we have zeros by default. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the elements of the second array and then assign it to those remaining indexes. Okay. And how do I know what this index number is? We are using this I to keep track of those index numbers. Every time when the number is assigned to the index number of the third array, the index number I is const constantly increasing. Okay. So that we do now where we left off. 
And as for the second array, I can use uh, another loop to get each element of the second array. Okay. And once I get each element of second array, I will also assign it to the indexes of the third array. And I also have to make sure that uh, each time during each execution of the loop, this index number is also increasing to make sure that the first element of the second array is assigned to here and second element of the second array is assigned to this index next. So index number still needs to be increased by one. Okay. So now if we run our program, as you can see, we are able to merge the elements of those two arrays. And the solution that we provided here, it can work with any two arrays because the loop is, is uh, capable enough to, uh, to, uh, to iterate every single element of first and second arrays. First loop is for getting all the elements of the first array and assigning it to the index of the third array. And then the second loop is for getting, getting the elements of the second array and then assigning it to the remaining indexes of the third array. And you can also test it with the different, uh, different arrays. For example, if I had uh, multiple elements in this first array to see if it, uh, if it can be, if it can uh, merge this, those two arrays now. See, this is my third array now. And in the third array, I do have all the elements of first array as well as all the elements of the second array. Okay, so this is one uh, one way of completing this task by using two separate loops to get the elements of two arrays and then store them into the third array. Of course, there could also be some other approach to complete uh, complete the same exact task. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you have any questions regarding this approach. I will reply to your comment. Please hit the like button if you found this video helpful and consider to subscribe to our channel if you would like to stay connected. Also, let me know in the comment section on which Java technical interview question you want me to cover next. Thank you so much. See you all in the next video.